Yeah, yeah, it's, and it can really knock your confidence. You've got to be careful about what you take on because I, <clears throat> yep. I remember my friends were advising me because uh, job things would come up and I'd say, oh, I can't do that. And they'd say, just take it and just learn on the job. That's what I did in whatever profession that they did. And uh, I wouldn't advise that. I wouldn't advise if your confidence is shaky and you don't think that you can do the job. So everyone, thank you for watching. I got an awesome guest, Andy Walsh, on tonight. We're going to talk about a wide range of topics from career advice to more technical ones. So stay tuned to the end. Also, I'd just like to remind you guys at this point, if you head over to BrushSauceAcademy.com, I definitely recommend signing up for the newsletter. You can get free brushes, tutorials, and stay up to date on all the content I'm producing. Okay. Do you have an intro type thing? Uh, very casual, yeah. Hey, everybody. I got another episode here. I got a, one of my good friends and special guest, Andy Walsh, on with us uh, here today. So thank you you know, very much for taking your time and, and talking about your work with us. Cool. Thanks for having me. I've been <laughs> I've been following your work for ages. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. You, you, it seems like you do a little bit of everything. Yeah, I, I sort of. I mainly do environments, I guess. Um, and I usually do things that are a little bit spooky <laughs> in some way or other. Yeah, so and that's that's what separate. Uh, that's what I really see in your work. That might be my favorite part is you have an ability kind of to kind of craft an atmosphere. You know, and, and to sell a mood that is just like top tier. Every every one of your your pieces, simple or complex, you just nail the lighting and the mood in it uh, so eloquently. I appreciate that because um, I uh, I sometimes sort of like you know as an artist you sort of think what am I you know what am I <laughs> and uh, and then I get sometimes I get sometimes I have my failures and sometimes I get praise and I think so what is it about my work that could that is good you know when you self-analyze and I think maybe my strengths are that I do go for the mood kind of thing and I've been wondering like for a long time what are my strengths and I think maybe that's it maybe that's my thing I, I like I like that I, you know what and my favorite part about mood is technically right if you do the atmosphere right you don't have to detail as much so you can get down an image a little bit quicker which I've been running out of time a lot lately so I'm trying to compensate by using lots of atmosphere to cover up for lots of details you got to get into exactly yeah it sort of hides a few things especially if you've got a client job and you try and wangle in a little bit of atmosphere so you don't have yep. to like <laughs> gives them less like... to fuss over right yeah that's it. <laughs> Less to nitpick. Uh, so how, like, how long have you been uh, doing this? You know, how, Or I should say, when did you get into art on a very kind of serious sort of level? Well, I was funny. I was just going through my old artwork because you said something about, like, uh, it might be good to look, go through some older stuff. And it goes back and back and back because I'm a bit of a dinosaur, I guess, um, <laughs> which is weird because I only started properly, uh, say, 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And I have a bit of a journey and a bit of a... A bit of a story. I don't know how much you want to get into that, but like, I, yeah, as much as you want, as much as you're willing to share. Okay, it's a, it's tricky. I've got to really like ask myself, am I, you know, is everyone prepared for this? Because it, it's it's really long, um, in terms of the time span and all that kind of stuff. I don't necessarily have to make it long in terms of retelling it, but um, the fact is, I'm now 42, and I, you know, started when I was in high school, but I took a massive break. So, um, so it, so when somebody says, how long have you been doing it? <clears throat> it's a tricky question because I took it seriously in about 2011. And so if you to look at my work from back then, which I can show you, um, I'll maybe bring that on my screen. Um, then, so you might think, well, it's not as bad as when you, as when you see other people who've just started. And it's because I had something of a head start in high school. Um, so if I show you this Ninja Turtle, that's not that one. That's the reference that I used. I really copied it one for one. Uh, let's see if I can find it properly. So, something like this, I guess. No, that's the final one. Um, so, so, yeah, I did this, and it was like the first time I really sat down to try and do something. But, of course, I had to use that reference that you saw before, like, and really, like, copy it. And that was done in about uh, 2011. So that was the standard that I was at. And I was like, I don't know whether this is good or bad or what. Um, um, and so, but like like I say, leading up to that, when I was in high school, I um, 
was doing stuff like this, which is oh, bloody awful. And I found I was going through my old stuff in the garage recently, and um, and I found this kind of stuff, which is like you know traditional medium, like oils on paper and stuff like that. And this got sake, <laughs> <could have> <laughs> um, so it's kind of you know it's satisfying when you go through old stuff and it's really crap because you think well you know at least I uh, come away from that I mean god look at that um, so so yeah there's some terrible stuff I did in high school and so then what I did was um, I uh, oh god um, yeah so I came out of high school and I had no direction whatsoever. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And somebody had said that there's no money in illustration. Back then, there was almost no, I don't think there was any Photoshop. So illustration was you airbrushing with a physical airbrush. And, um, and so I just thought there's just not going to be much money in this. And then I wanted to get into f making films. So I went to a not very good college and did a not very good course and um, quickly realized that I probably wasn't going to get into doing film and I'd probably get into graphic design. So I started to do make websites and stuff. And I thought to hell with going to all the way to London because you had to go to London to get into film. I didn't want to go to London. So it's, instead I thought I'm just going to do graphic design and do the slow game. Maybe graphic design will get me into the games industry someday. Um, so 10 years of that, and I was just sick of it. <laughs> um, what what ages were you doing graphic design? Like all your 20s? Uh, yeah, I would say from about 21 to until I was about early, like 30, 32. And I remember um, thinking I've I was earning more money 10 years ago than I am at like 30 and I it was at every job I had I was just looking at the clock and just depressed and couldn't wait to get get out of there and I thought something's got to change and so I ended up like I trained as a personal trainer I thought maybe I'll get into personal training uh, oh God, your story is exactly like mine really? like, I, you know how many people I come and talk to us you know artists working now mo a most of them started in in graphic design my, you know myself included most oh, yeah. of them end up also you know really love physical training as well and yeah there's a just so many similarities it's funny how, how our minds are all kind of like you know we're, we gravitate to our the same things it's yeah, not just like, star wars <laughs> yeah yeah it's, there's certain disciplines i don't know what it is yeah. but um I think especially if you grow up in I grew up in the 80s and mm -hmm. so if you like uh, watching ac action movies you tend to get drawn towards I need to work out and that was the that was how it was back then like you all you're <laughs> do, all we're doing is watching these oily muscly dudes like Stallone and Van Dan and Schwarzenegger going around tearing That's things up right and it's like wow I got to be a part of that <laughs> yeah and if I can't be it then I got to draw it and that's part of the reason why we get into art and so um, so yeah I guess that's how that goes and um, so then I, so yeah, like I thought I've got to do something. So I tried the personal training. I even trained as a psychotherapist for a while and didn't think that that was going to go anywhere. Then I thought, ah, visual effects, that would be good. Then I heard, um, I was easily dissuaded. I heard, oh, if you get into visual effects, then you've got to work, you've, again, you've got to go to London, right? And you're going to be working 12 hours a day. And uh, I was like, I just, it just turned me, turned me off uh, the idea of doing that. So I remember going, I had a friend's wedding and uh, an old school teacher turned up to his wedding and he's a very wise, sage person. He's got like um, three or four degrees and uh, very well educated, very intelligent. And we, we sat down amidst the, you know, reception of this wedding and everybody's partying around us. And I said, oh, I need your advice. I just, I'm really lost in my life and I don't know what to do. And he said, how old are you? And I said, oh, I'm just about to turn 33. And he says, you've still got time, but not much. And you've got to, you've got to choose soon because the doors are going to start closing. And he says, you need to decide within the next few months what it is. Really think about it. And so um, I was looking around YouTube and I saw a video. Um, who's the, oh, I've known his name off, like, off the top of my head for ages and it's just, I've just drawn a blank. Who's the, um, the guy... Who's got a school in uh, in an Asian country and he teaches and he's like yeah yeah 
um, things I saw a video of his. So I was saying um, that, uh, yeah, I discovered, I was watching a, a Feng Zhu video on on YouTube and uh, I was just absolutely blown away. And he was doing like this time lapse of painting a landscape. And I, I thought that's what I want to do. And, uh, you know, whenever somebody tells you what, if you want to figure out what you want to do, go back to when you were a kid and what was it that you wanted to do then? And I was always drawing. And I thought, I think that's it. I think my destiny is going to be in getting into the entertainment industry because I've always loved film and cartoons and I just want to be a part of that. He's, um, he's the one I saw too that, like, that was the light bulb moment when he started the Nomen stuff. Uh, and I saw I saw him, he was drawing some mechs and then like a few, and I was like, oh my God, I never seen people do that before, let alone over the course of like an hour to two hour video, right? It's just like, back then, right? When you first get exposed to something like that, it's just like, I guess now it's probably a lot more commonplace. Everybody's uploading stuff like that to Instagram yeah. and YouTube, but like back then, right? It's, it's just one of those first times you, you don't forget. Yeah. It's weird to think that that side of the industry is only about 10 years old, even though... Mm -hmm. How you know they are it goes back. back as far as Disney and beyond, but our the current state that we're in is in its infancy, and uh, things are changing a lot. Yes, uh, constantly changing. So yeah, so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll get myself. I think I already had a tablet because I was doing. I guess it's worth mentioning that on the side, I did get into 3D around about 1999. And I had 3D Studio Max version 2 or something like that. So you got and in early. You got in pretty early. Yeah. So I'd already been messing around in 3D and instantly was like, oh, this is good. And uh, so by the time I was like 32, I'd already done uh, a lot, bit of architectural visualization and that sort of thing. So I could go into 3D and get a head start. Um, but uh, so I already had a tablet for stuff along those lines and so I thought why don't I get that out and learn how to paint with it um so I was thinking it see if I can find like this is like a folder with my oldest now did you stuff. try some digital painting before you ever went and did it traditionally no no I, when I started I did traditional in high school because that's mm -hmm. all there was and then you took the break uh yeah and then I didn't touch anything like not even drawing at all for like 10 years and um, so, like, around about 2011 my, to 12-ish, to my stand was, was like this. Yep, I, very cool. Kind of like here, something like this. That's um, not bad. Well, it's a bit, obviously... It's, it's, it's not up to your current standards, but that's, yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> um, I was similar. I, I drew all through middle school straight, but then I didn't draw, like, in high school, like, rarely at all like i just did mm. kind of lost it to kind of be socialized and then i kind of started to fall back in midway through college and you think you perhaps retain a bit of that when you've had that gap of something yeah 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 because it was always there it's just not actively getting uh yeah. tested and pushed so i never got improved or anything but yeah yeah i guess so i guess i had some it felt like although it felt like it was like you know, 10 years mm -hmm. maybe 15 years was like a huge break away from doing anything like that Maybe something retained, so I had some kind of head start. But I think this was also one of the first things that I did. If I entered a competition, oh awesome! Well, that thing's <laughs> awesome. Creature you, made. You know what it well. is too. It's uh, particularly like a lot of people around that age, twenties or maybe late twenties and into the thirties. They experience so much of life, right? Because they're not drawing; they're off getting a lot of experience. Yeah. Like, because I hear the same thing with mothers that kind of put their art career down to raise kids for 15 years maybe even more but when they go back after taking that much time off i've heard you know first story they're even better like they, they're able to kind of get right back in and not only that they're better than they were 15 years ago and i think a lot of that has to do with getting experience and just living life and taking it, it you know it, it adds to what you're going to have to say in your art and reflects a lot of what you know you went through too well maybe also you maturity learn, you learn to learn so yeah if you've learned anything in that period it was difficult you can apply that like it could be martial arts or something yes. and you say oh i learned a difficult thing and maybe i could apply the same discipline to this um because when i was a kid and i was in high school drawing all i wanted to do was draw from my imagination draw superheroes and draw like you know that kind of uh, mm -hmm. graphic novel -y type stuff without really doing any studies whatsoever and so there was no maturity there and i didn't really 
progress to. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, I think we all start at that fan art phase, right? We're, we're all drawing the turtles and the you know video games and the Star Wars, and then yeah, it has to get it gets beyond that. For not everybody, of course, some people do all right, but yeah, a lot of us have to get beyond that, and that's what's tough. Yeah, that's it. So, um, so I guess the so I you know I just started like uh, getting the odd little client, and occasionally yeah. I was doing some at the very early stages. I was doing a bit of graphic design to pay the bills, and a bit of art, and. Um, you know, it's all badly paid stuff. Um, <laughs> Always is. I was doing yeah. deviant art commissions. That was my hustle. <laughs> oh yeah. In two thousand nine. Yeah, I did this one thing where um, there was a company that would pay you like uh, whatever they felt like. Good. <laughs> and it was in the contract, and so I did some work once, and I was like, "Oh, actually, I'm actually owed a reasonable amount considering I did because you know it was mm-hmm. a, a fair bit of work over a couple of weeks." Yeah. And they didn't pay me, didn't pay me, didn't pay me, and um, and then I found I saw all these reviews for them online. People saying that you know, son of a, didn't pay me. <laughs> oh no. So, so then I what I did was I contacted their client and I said, "You're the people who come to you to make you the artwork for your video game, didn't pay me." <laughs> and uh, then it just got messy, and I was threatened with legal action. And oh my, because I was threatening them with legal you action. You went over their head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So and it was all yeah, it was a real scam and that, so you, yeah there was lots of stuff and I bet on. there's still all kinds of things like that going around too with like all yeah. these because now there's all these websites that try to you know host you know different art commissions and they give it to the bottom <laughs> the bottom feeder art like not like to to disregard like the artist but the person will take the job for the less amount oh, of money and stuff right yeah. it's like a bidding like a counter bidding thing <laughs> just take it for the less amount oh yeah and in, in that stage you're just trying to figure out how do I get paid for this. Yeah, and it's uh, really tricky because what I what I've learned is there is even after ten years there's there is no way to just go out and get a client. Um, no. They come to they people. Come. Have, yeah, people have asked me before, like or in, in like casual interviews, how do you find your clients and what do you recommend? And the only thing I found is that people just come to you and they ask you for work and. They you have can to come. Go asking people if they need work until you're blue in the face, and it can just, it'll just get you nowhere almost. That and that's honestly what my answer is every time. I I've n- never applied for our job in our job in my life, and I I and like my experience doing that is minimum. You see, like on Art Station, they have a job section, and you yeah. hear about these websites. Like, there's things out there, but it's like I personally have never had to. Fortunately enough, never, right? Never had to kind of dabble in that. But you know, and they got the art tests and stuff. But either way, even if they seek you out sometimes they want you to take the art test anyway so they'll just push yeah. you kind of head in line if you do all right well yeah i mean um i did yeah i've i had one or two little incidents where i had an art test and i failed miserably um, yep. it was really bad like uh it was humiliating the one this this one job that i applied for that really it took me years to recover from this job application because i didn't know what i was and what i wasn't and to this day i'm still struggling but like it was a concept art job, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, I do concept art." Um, and I applied, and I got an interview, and the interview was great. I was online, um, and I usually interview pretty well because I was older than a lot of artists, so I've got a little bit more confidence and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it comes with age. And then they gave me the art test, and I was like, "Okay, they're going to have me do a landscape of the castle or something." And the art test was a car. No, it was a it was a character. Oh wow. Like shit. Uh, right, <laughs> we both bit that people. bullet. <laughs> like, oh crap. <laughs> um, actually, I'm trying to think which came first, was it the car or the character? Because I remember, I think it was the car, and I was like, I, I don't, I do not even know where to begin because I've done environments this whole time, and so I spent like an entire day just making a wheel. I thought Ooh. this is gonna go well, <laughs> so I, um, I hit them up and I said, look. Uh, I'm not really going to do this. So, uh, is there anything else you've got? And they were like, "Well, that's okay. We can probably train you up on vehicle design. Uh, do do a character." And um, and I was just like, "Oh my god, this is just not working." I had no workflow whatsoever, mm-hmm. and I failed that as well. And so I I just had to kind of you know walk away from that. Um, and um, but actually, that wasn't the thing that was the most humiliating of that. Um, Phase. This was about 2012, 13 now, and I'd been doing stuff for a couple of years. Um, 
the hardest part was that same company said, well, we'll do, we'll do some freelance with you. And uh, a gig came along. It was my first professional gig. And it was working for um, the video game, uh, what's it called? The Order 1886. Yeah. On station. That was a stunning looking game. Yeah. And they, um, they were so cagey about it. They like, barely wanted to tell me the name of it. It was really like, you know, under, under wraps and stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, and I, I went out for a meal with my friends to celebrate something else. But at the meal, I announced, hey, I've finally done it. I finally got my first proper job in a, on a mm-hmm. real vehicle. And it was like a really proud moment. And so they gave me the, um, the first brief. And they said, can you do this style? It was like a loose style. And my, my weakness has, has always been that I'm too tight. And, um, and so I, I'm working on it. And I'm... And it's going quite well. And they said, if you do well on the first one, we'll give you another brief. And they were waiting for so long for feedback from the client that they just gave me the other brief. Yeah. I was like, great, this means I'm doing well because they gave me the second brief. Um, and I was so stifled and stiff and tight. Um, I finally delivered the first one. And um, and then I, so I did it in 3D. And I painted over the top. Yeah. And I, this time I really painted over the top to get rid of the 3D because I was so scared about look, it looking too 3D and too stiff and too tight. So I was really pleased. I was up, I was stressing crazy. I was up till 3 a.m. Finally handed it in, and the next day they replied and they said, "This looks great. Now make it look painterly." Hmm. And I was just like, "Oh my god!" And that's what you just spent all the effort doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Like... So. Long story short, they just um, said, "Yeah, we'll we'll take it from here." And in other words, like, you they know, could pass it along. Yeah, and so that was that was a really really difficult moment because I just wanted to be successful and make it happen. And um, and then I saw that the painting had been finished by someone else, and that really hurt as well. And yeah, so I, I, I've lot- been in that position too. It really? to twenty ten and eleven. Yeah, they. I could, I could compose pictures right with the the composition and stuff, but then it, it lacks some of the I guess consistency that you know we were all wor- working uh, kind of like on Slack and stuff. Even even back then they were just passing stuff around, but you know it it wasn't like face to face. So it's like I never was in on some of these meetings, and they're like you know where they get like hey this is exactly what we're looking for because you're always taking someone's direction, right? That's probably not an artist, so it's like you you you're never kind of really sure. You just gotta hope for the best in some of these situations yeah yeah it's and it can really knock your confidence you've got to be careful about what you take on because i <clears throat> yep. i remember my friends were advising me uh because job things would come up and i'd say oh, i can't do that and they'd say just take it and just learn on the job that's what i did in whatever profession that they did and uh, i wouldn't advise that i wouldn't advise if your confidence is shaky and you don't think that you can do the job i wouldn't necessarily advise that and just wait a bit longer until you're like, you know, you don't want to get a brief and just shit yourself. You yeah. don't want to do that. You don't want to be like, I don't know what to do. It's really like uh, it undermines your confidence then if you don't if you don't win. And yeah. it's amazing the the subtlety of like what you're doing when you're in your zone, right? Your confidence zone, like how much that comes through in your work. Or it's like, yeah, if you're doing something a little bit out of your you know, out of your training expertise, then it, it, it a it's going to take you a lot longer to do, and then like b it, it's it's kind of probably need more revisions, you know, on yeah. your end before you even give it to the client, because you're gonna like you're gonna double 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 guess yourself, right? At least that's what I do on like a lot of these things, and I'm like, yeah, you know, but it's like okay, here's a castle, or here's a here's some kind of sequence, like good, where it's like yeah, characters and vehicle designs, right? In particular, yeah, always like. A lot more added challenge if you're not specifically yeah. trained. It's a whole different skill set. Well, that's it, and that's what always baffled me. Is um, when I first started out, I was really into uh, Dave Raposa. Have you? Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Loved his stuff, and I started out thinking, okay, I'm going to do characters. So I thought, okay, um, I don't start off with faces and heads. Start drawing heads. Then I got onto the nose, and I was like, this is really hard. And it's like a week on noses, and I was like, oh my god. And they just hit me like. That's just noses. I've got to do eyes and yep. like all of that. And I was like, I'm never going to be able to do characters. I'll do environments. That'll be way easier. And little did I know that it's actually not because to do like characters, at least if you get anatomy, you've pretty much just got anatomy. 
Yep. You can just do it over and over and just do the anatomy and, and you're drawing in a way that you're painting kind of one thing, like a character, which is just one thing lit. Uh, just, just to simplify. Yeah. Well, if you're doing environments, you've got to be able to draw like trees and rocks and water and reflections and every kind of architecture and every kind of lighting scenario. Um, and so I think that, you know, I think I don't know whether I picked the right one, but uh, at least I guess with environments, I had the 3D, which probably persuaded me a bit to go in that direction. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, but I, I did want to like uh, sort of caution people at the, I guess what I want to speak out to is the people who are in the early stages and they're like not quite sure of what they're doing and uh, like I wasn't in, back in the day. Mm -hmm. And um, and just trying to just advise certain caution because I just went in thinking, oh, this will be great. I'll just do this, and within a few years, I'll probably get a job. Then I'll work my way up to senior. Then I'll be an art director, and um, and it never really happened. Um, even like to this day, I'm still like not sure where my career is heading and if if I even kind of have one. Um, and it all starts, and fortunately, like the, in the early days, what you're supposed to be just doing is, how are my skills developing? But instead, you may end up saying, how am I paying the bills? And how is that affecting what artwork I'm making? You it know? starts to more and more, particularly right, the older you get, it's like more things you have to contend with, and you start making art for different reasons, and it, it, it transitions when it, when it becomes your livelihood. You have to think about it and approach it entirely different. Like I was telling some of my friends at an art hangout last night, the same, the same exact thing. I was telling them like, wow, it's like I was thinking back ten years ago. I, I, I was in a very different place, you know, mentally, and what I was drawing and why I was drawing it. It was, and it's amazing how much a lot of that. Well, I'm still drawing the same, same shit, I guess. But it's like yeah. I'm using. I'm, I'm. I really have to plan how I can use it, what I can use it for. You know, essentially for me because I do a lot of this independent stuff. I got to figure out how to monetize something. Three, three, four different ways, or or use it to kind of circle back to you know some kind of value out of it. It's right. It's rarely something. I guess I I miss the time to have to enjoy just making stuff, and it doesn't matter what happens with it. Very rarely that's the case. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, it has to be very um, like uh, market driven, and then yeah. Um, so the 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 ideal is that you. The, the sort of the ideal career path is kind of you get into a studio and then you don't have to worry. But so I, I just assumed that, that that would just happen. I just get good, get a job in the studio. Um, but I always at the back of my mind wondered if I had what it took is the thing, and I probably underestimated what it, what it took um, because I I've still yet to be able to work in a studio and. Uh, and it, I think because I'm so focused on environments, uh, and I think studio work usually need a bit more breadth um, and quite a bit of talent. And they, what do you think about the talent factor? Because I used to, in the beginning I thought there's no such thing as talent; it's just hard work. Yeah. As I've gotten older, I've thought, well, I think talent is a factor because I've been doing this for almost ten years, and I should be better at X, Y, Z by now. You know. I think you're plenty fine in all that. Like your, your work is every bit as good as a lot of like the I guess the in-house artists, right? That's what we're making the comparison to. Like you know, no, not a doubt in my mind. I think for for maybe like somebody you right, we do a lot of freelance stuff yeah. and contract based work. So I think it for I guess the difference getting in inside of a job is it's a like being at the right place at the right time is a, is a huge part of it. Like getting your work in front of the right person yeah. to see if like, you know, it, it's a lot of like, is it a good fit? You know, yeah. is, is that the best fit for you? That's how, how I always looked at it. Cause I get a lot of friends, a lot of former students in a lot of these places. Like, yeah, I could do that job. But like, like you said, even with the graphic design, because 
even what we see online, so much of it is just these pretty pictures, right? There, there's only so many pretty pictures you can make on a project, and then you're just doing the concept stuff. Okay, let's draw yeah. 98 different wheels and all the battle damage on the wheels, and then the muddy wheel, and then let's draw what the footprint, right? It's a lot of like the very small mundane tasks that we we in the you know the public don't see a lot of. And I was like, yeah, yeah that that stuff would burn me out, like especially if I was you know doing that like nine to five, maybe even longer. I guess I kind of heard. I I don't have firsthand knowledge of this, but there was like rumors around this week, for example, that a lot of the key artists at Naughty Dog kind of left, like oh. you know after The Last of Us Two, like they're all transitioning off to other companies now, because you know probably that maybe a lot of that probably has to do with you know how things are managed, right? And being managed like that as an artist, like that for me that's kind of counterintuitive like i i love switching roles up or switching i guess mindsets up with with the di different gigs like i'm always doing something different or i'm just doing the good part of the projects because you can right you can kind of choose the part you like where mm. you're not you're not doing like 10 months of really beautiful paintings and then you're drawing the mundane stuff and the mechanical stuff how to do the, what the puzzle art looks like right for another two years on that project so yeah i think it and, and half of it too for getting in is like you know who you know what are your connections like 56 percent, i believe was the last statistic i i had read of people working in house they got hired by you know oh. contact yeah so it's yeah. it's a real it, kind of circumstantial thing and i honestly think it has far less to do with uh like pure skill base because like yeah. we were talking about earlier a lot of that i think a lot of the studio stuff is a lot of you know kind of learning on the job you get in with a good amount of work and then you if you fill in the blanks you learn the rest Okay, that's interesting. Um, and the same with the film industry is like, I think the the quality part for the film industry is is even lower. But it's um, very much about they pick whoever they yes at last on the project. Uh, and instead of seeing say, because I always dreamed that uh, why don't I do a personal project based on a certain IP that I like, mm -hmm. and then when the IP comes out, they'll pick me. But that's not how it works. They would in, in fact, I got a. An example of this. Awesome. Uh, are you familiar with my um, grayscale painting? Let's see if I can yes, find it. Yes, the yeah. He-Man one. So um, blow that up. Yeah. So I did that one, and love that it. Just that's my single most popular piece to date. Period. And I, uh, I just sort well, of did it, and I was it's like, it's an yeah, awesome piece. Upload. And it went viral all over Image. It went viral all over Instagram. Um, and it's uh, amazing the power of fan art, right? Well, there we go. Yeah. My uh, most famous piece is the one I did from 2010 with Chewbacca riding a squirrel. I still can't escape uh, that thing, Shadow. Really? And it's like, well, you know, it's just... <laughs> you either run with it or you run. Yeah. Away from it. Um, so, uh, like, so I, I, th so that when the new He-Man stuff starts coming out, they start talking about a new film and all that kind of stuff. Somebody, on, and, and like I, I follow the He-Man uh, Master of the Universe. Facebook groups, and somebody told me that they know somebody who's working on the new IP somewhere that had a picture on the wall of their studio that looked, by description, a lot like this. <laughs> and so what they don't do in the film industry is go, who's this guy? Let's hire this guy. They, yeah. they just tell their team, make it look like that. <laughs> you know, it, It's cheaper and faster for them because they're going to go with someone they already know, right? Someone that's worked on the last project, and they're just going to grab your art, my art, you know Joe's art off of Instagram, Pinterest. They're gonna just say, yeah. hey, "We need this." You know why? You know why buy it from you or you know deal with the hassle of training and you know moving and relocating you and getting it. Like it's, I think, I think it's probably a lot more the opposite way for the game industry where they are a lot, probably a lot more apt to go and kind of go after you know probably the yeah. source. At least yeah. that, that's yeah, that that's been my experience. Because yeah. they'll send me when I'm working contract on a game job, they'll already have their art guide, you know, their style guides, and they're yeah. they're big PDFs. So like, hey, this is what we're looking for. This is what the project is, and it's usually kind of littered with my art already. Like, so even if I couldn't have taken the job, they were going to send that to the next artist down, you know, on their email yeah. list. You know, I and I never had spoken to a lot of these people before either, but I was there for, for first choice because they kind of like the art that they want for that game okay. and so you know someone else would have had to kind of play to you know make their art look like mine i think after so it, from my yeah my experience with the games it's the complete opposite right so yeah um so yeah it's like in terms of getting like sourced and getting found and getting picked like you were talking about um how the studio work might be taxing on the, in terms of the repetitious side but then if you're freelancing you're you're stuck with the burden of how do i yeah 
get the work in. And uh, that's why I, I think I was advocating for studio work. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the independent side would be great if you're just working from home, doing your own thing. But, um, but like, uh, I, I, what I'm trying to say is when I started out, I would watch interviews with people, uh, with other artists, and it was all like, um, it all just seemed so straightforward. Mm -hmm. The message was, there's an abundance of games companies out there, and concept art is the new big thing, and there's just absolutely no end of work. And uh, that hit me. I was like, wow. So not only is this going to be fun, but there's going to be plenty of jobs out there. And, um, and then pretty soon, a saturation point hit, and, the, and then the talent and the, uh, the, uh, the quality, the quality bar was getting higher and higher and higher. And it was like chasing this wave. And I was always felt like I was just behind the wave. And, um, and, and I think it's because I was trying to get into quote unquote concept art. But I think that there is another path now where, and, and I think a lot of people just go, oh, I want to be a concept artist without even thinking about what the options are and without even knowing the ramifications of narrowing it, narrowing yourself down like that. Yeah. Um, so now I'm starting to think, after not really finding, I don't know, maybe, maybe my quality bar will, will increase and I'll be able to get somewhere. But thus far, I've not had any luck trying to get studio work. So I'm thinking, what am I? What's my plan B? And um, and I have an Etsy store which is doing, I guess, okay considering it's passive. Yeah, um, maybe that will grow. That's so that's the that's all our our dreams. We right? get that passive income as an artist to subtly start to nudge up <laughs> over yeah. and over again. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm looking I'm, this week myself. I'm looking at all the affiliate sites. I like because I use so many services like Adobe Cloud. I yeah. use Dropbox. I use Squarespace. I'm gonna look go after every product I use and love, you know, routinely, and I'm gonna see what they have for affiliate programs, so I could just like passively start recommending them when I'm doing a YouTube channel or something. Put the link in, get a little bit of passive on that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. It's a yeah. hustle. Yeah. Everyone's hustling. <laughs> well, I know, and I, it can, it, you have to be careful as an artist because yeah. if you're, say, you're selling tutorials and your goal is to make money as opposed to help people. Yeah. It could, you can start to like have like a conflict going on there, um, and so there's like I don't know as an artist you sort of try you're supposed to be getting into it to make good art you know, mm -hmm. but then you, it's this horrible conflict of like, but then I've got to make money and um, where does the sort of moral line where do I draw that line as as to how I do it honestly and with integrity and all that kind of thing, um, but certainly. It, that, irrespective of that, you still have to like. If you can't, if you feel like you're not going to get the studio gigs, then you've got to start thinking as an illustrator as opposed to a concept artist. And the yeah. avenue is is different because you. Uh, okay, did you follow? I think you've had him on your show actually. Um, uh, Justin Donaldson. Yes, Justin Donaldson. Um, so he went. You, and do you? He's a great one? example of everything you just talked about. Actually, Justin yes. Donaldson's path. Right I think there. it was his path that really opened my eyes up. Um, yeah. Because you, you follow One Fantastic Week occasionally. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. I, I, I don't catch every episode. There's, uh, again, then there's some people in parts of some communities that don't like what they do, but I, I still really respect and I do try to catch one every once in a while. But yeah. there, there's a lot of good content there. Because if you look at what, you know, particularly what Pete Moorbacher is doing, he's yeah. actually killing it. Like, Pete. just doing, like, he's doing his thing. He's got like three hundred thousand followers in, in some places, and you know, he, that that's like the dream for so many people. You know, he uh, doesn't have to work. No one's cutting him a check. He's cutting himself a check. He's exactly. he's doing everything on his terms. Yeah, he really knows. Well, like 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 he said once. I don't know if you knew this about him, but his parents were really big on like business and that kind of thing so he instantly got a, a leg up on understanding that that is such a great thing to have i'm like in the complete opposite direction where i'm still learning like basic business practices right here and that's why i've never put a video or resource out on the business side that's going to come in like five hopefully hopefully five to ten years when i got when i really feel confident enough right because again if you get into teaching for the wrong reasons like money and you're just you know putting content out or 
you know, do, telling people whatever just because you want to get popular or you want to get a paycheck. I, I think that's that's a terrible, mis, you know, disingenuous sort of thing. So I, yeah. I'm just waiting on so much ideas. Uh, like I want to get into the business of being an art, but I'm still, I feel like I'm still learning a lot yeah. of that as I go. So I'm going to wait, you know, I'm going to wait till I get all that done. And then I'll dive into a whole other tier of, of kind of content I'd love to help younger artists with. Yeah, that's a big one. Is if you could teach people um, how to, yeah, how to do the business side of things. Because some, if you get into freelance illustration, you're either going to start selling prints, and if you start selling mm -hmm. prints, you if you live in the US like I used to, um, you can go to um, as long as we don't end up spending the rest of eternity in, in some sort of viral lockdown. I um, know. Oh go God. To trade shows and things and yeah. exhibitions and. Um, and uh, sell art there because that's where they get their main bread and butter, don't they? Uh, those, yeah, I got friends that hustle those shows when I go talk to them. And it, it, some of them more aggressively than others. They'll just jump like that's their deal. They're gonna go show to show to show, right? Yeah. For like six months straight, almost on the road. And that's a that on a, between you. That's a young man's game. Like I got a, I got yeah. a lot of people even in their mid thirties that are like that have been doing that for like since they were 25 like 25 to 35 and they're like i'm working on an exit strategy i cannot do this any longer i i need to have a family like i need something more with my life now but they do that hustle and they would you know they could do maybe like 100 grand or more a year just wow. really getting their deal on yeah just going to show and you know a good weekend they could do anywhere from like five thousand to you know ten thousand or more i would hear well, you could scale that down. You could you could yeah. say okay, well, you don't have to do it as often. Yeah, like, like, yeah. that's that's exactly the solution. Just, uh, Some of them do. Like like that's yeah. what Pete does, right? He yeah. he doesn't even go to shows anymore. I was like, I'm paying someone else. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what um, that's what I would encourage people to do is to think like uh, there's not there's not it's not just concept art. Um, there, if you wanted to become an illustrator, there is a, an avenue for that. It's a longer game, and it's going to take. It's going to happen in tiny, tiny increments, but at the end of it, nobody can fire you. Is the thing. Yeah. Um, the, be in it guess, for the long haul. Yeah. So I mean, something as long as you don't put all of your eggs in one basket, like say, you know, whoever's doing trade shows is going to be pretty uh, is in a pretty difficult position right now. When yes, they are they are hurting. So you do have to have lots of different things going on, but um, but but then start early. Start start on Instagram and start building a brand and follow yeah, some of the stuff that like uh, Justin Donaldson done, which is um, to really find your voice, which is the hardest thing as an artist. Hardest to do. thing. I still feel like I look for mine on the average day. <laughs> what, like, okay, what am I doing today? Oh yeah, let's go your, your default, right? Oh, what do I want to do on instant boot up? Okay. It's not, it's not pretty Pinterest girls. I want to paint epic fantasy scapes, you know, that, that, and try to make that your bread and butter. Well, um, well, like with you, like I guess you're still doing uh, like viz dev style uh, sort of concept. Kind I've of I, yeah, I've leaned into that because uh, they can you know generally a little quicker to do time frame wise. And I've I'm like really right now full time parenting, so I'm like only working four to five hours a day at, at most. So it's okay. my work hours are, are cut. And I only get an afternoon off like right now when I get a little bit of help from you know the grandma. But yeah, a lot of a lot of my time and energy right now is like my battery's always on in, on on empty because I'm I'm just putting myself into my family because both with both kids under three and four, it's a very pivotal time for them. And I I don't my my dad kind of missed it for us because he was he lived at his job pretty much. I only saw him like an hour a day, maybe probably less. And I don't I won't want to make that same mistake. So yeah, I see. I, I often wondered like how could it, you know as I don't have kids and. Uh, and I struggle to it's tough. Know, with, with time as it is, and I think, man, I wouldn't know what it terrifies me to be honest. It, it, it no, it's it's scary, it, and I'm trying to like organize your time and and get the most out of everything. It and I'm learning a lot of that as I go because I am I'm a relatively new father, so I'm yeah. and and that's doing that with business and yeah, I and I have to say no to a lot of work too because of that, like because I nothing like before, right. It's like whatever I could figure it out on the job, right? I, like I don't care. They could ask me for whatever. I'll I'll do it if the price is right. And I but I could figure it out. And I could spend three in the morning, five in the morning, whatever. I'll just burn right, the midnight oil, solve the problem, and get the image done. 
that's not that's not an option for me. I never know when I'm going to get interrupted. I'm already, you know, my day starts at 5 a.m. when the kid gets up, and it's just like going to bed at 3. That doesn't work that well. So, yeah, I'm just I'm swearing off a lot of freelance right now just to kind of you know sustain my sanity and and build other things. But yeah, crazy time, and it's not forever. But for now, I'm figuring it out. So there's probably going to be a bit of a lull, and then you'll um, slowly yeah. pick it up as the kids get. Yeah, more, more but, like you're right. Once when they're both five, and in in regular school. Yeah. You know if that becomes a thing again, so yeah. we'll see. So what is your what is your current process like with your imagery? Because I'm sure like overall, you know, your years and your experience, your your tools probably evolved. Maybe your technique has changed. What do you what's your current like go tos when you're building and, and crafting one you know an image? Well, I'm jump. I'm on the bandwagon. I'm on the blender bandwagon, as I'm sure Me you are. Me too. I just jumped in. <laughs> I'm late. It's like a cult. Uh, we just can't. Uh, we're trapped now. Um, eventually, Blender's going to come out and uh, make us all drink some sort of special drink, and then we'll all go off into heaven. But um, yeah, we're addicting. all on it. We're all stuck. It's all together. And because like, there's nothing out there that's um, doing what it's doing is the thing. So um, I just like looking at the viewport and being like, yeah, that's. It's exactly I, what I want, right? <laughs> Oh, it's ex- it's accessible. It's 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 easy to find information. That's my favorite part. When I right when I get stuck, I go to Facebook. Hey, what the hell is going on? Right, I post a, a screenshot of what I can't figure out, and now you get help like within two minutes, which yeah. it was never like that before with other software. Well, I was I did use Three D Studio Max at first. Mm-hmm. And, um, that was great, and it's it still beats Blender in certain ways. Um, actually, in terms of the ease of going into a, a 2D viewport and drawing something out and like carefully putting the vertices where you want still wins hands down. But um, and the viewport in I gather in the sort of 2020 2021 versions of 3D Max has started to become real time. So fair enough, uh, they're starting to compete. But um, but Blend is free and uh, and they were the first ones. It seems I think unless I'm mistaken, yeah. Blender was the first one that was doing the real time thing um and it yeah was, as well yeah as well as they do it's yeah like that that engine so crazy the ev there and stuff so yeah and i always have to i've always wanted to have decent fog in my um in my renders so like something yeah, like how this. much of the atmosphere are you doing in because I know Blender can do it. I, the, the what is it like the OPB? Uh, there's like certain objects, right? Like a volume that yeah. you can put in. Yeah, um, there is um, the VDB files. Yeah, VDB. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. I bought some of those. The clouds they have explosions and stuff. Like you could put any effect in a Blender. That's what's insane with it. Sure. Well, like this. This was done in V-Ray. So V-Ray. this a lot of the. I don't even know if I actually had any. 3D atmosphere because it was always so slow in in V-Ray. Yep. It, so, and then this was probably done a similar wise in V-Ray. And at a certain point, I switched it up, and I think it was maybe, I think this was maybe the first one. I was like, oh, Blender, and I sort of got into this thing, and I think that was actually an EV render. Um, and it's EV can do certain things well, and certain things not so well. But at the time, I didn't yeah. even know how to use cycles, so I was like, okay. I'll, I'll leave cycles for now. Um, it was when cycles. I didn't realize that cycles did actually use GPU as well. That I was like, ah, right. And so I got even into it even more. This was done in EV as well. EV did. EV licks um, this sort of scene. Really does it really well. Awesome. Um, yeah, like not- those dark, darker, moody scenes. Like one of the ones I had done recently. It, it's amazing how well like that particular setting and mood like Eevee does handle that so so well yeah if you have artificial lights and you have some nice reflections it's just perfect so um, on that hallway piece there sorry it, did, now did you build all that out and, and you know kind of concept that or did you kind of kit bash any this was all made from scratch in 3D coat oh, uh, wow and it came together um, see if I can find the, the whips for this because um, it came together pretty well, and I and I surprised myself, and that's um, that's kind of when you know uh, that you the, the the software's working because um, you surprise yourself on what you what you can do. Um, I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, I have no idea how to start a, a hard surface piece like that with three D code. That looks so cool. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, do you use 3D Code much? Uh, not much, but I have it, and I just dabbled. Right. I just dabbled in it, you know, to kind of add some scratches on some <laughs> ruins I was modeling. Yeah, I'd really recommend um, getting into that. It's really, really good for certain things. It's, it's just unbeatable. Um, I've just got to remember what I called the, the damn alien. There we go. Um, so 3D Code. So it started out like this, <clears throat> and I think. Uh, <laughs> It was just like cutting out the basic shape and then going in and just... Did you build some of those 2D stencils that you were kind of using for them? I forgot what the, the proper... I guess they're kind of stencils, right? Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah pretty much stencils. Um, I'm trying to think now, looking back. Some of it's just the basic, you know, you do like a, a geometric, like uh, yeah. lasso kind of uh, click around thing. And But I, these, I can't quite remember what these were. Um, could have been like a 2D image that, like you say, you put over the top and then you extrude it, sort of thing. Um, this is why it's so important to to like um, capture these little progress moments because there's so many times I've done a painting, I've gone back and I'm like, how the hell did I do that? <laughs> um, so well, that that's a brilliant piece. I love that, um, and, and I'm sure with stuff like that too, you probably learned a ton along the yeah. process, right? And I have a video which is quite. Uh, I got hit by a, a buddy of mine, um, Pace Pace Wilder. Um, yeah, his stuff is amazing. I got to get Pace on here. Is what I got to do. Yeah, after. <laughs> yeah. We met in uh, in LA when we were, we attended a um, sort of one pixel brush kind of week, weekend workshop, and um, he hit me up recently like, "Thank you, you finally showed me how to get out of 3D coat and into Blender because <laughs> he didn't know for all this time he was like clicking around because it is really." Um, do you have the bridge for 3D coat to get them right into Blender, or no? You just—it's actually the process is fairly straightforward. And like I said, I've got a YouTube video which explains it, and um, it really only takes a few clicks. But if you don't know what you're doing, it is not going to be intuitive. Uh, so what I recommend, if anybody's struggling with 3D coat, is to look up the 3D coat Discord, and there's one lone hero in there, <laughs> uh, Silas something. Um, and uh, he's helped uh, helped me out on every single issue that I had, straight away awesome. without much delay. And uh, there was like so many, so many issues, like to the point where I was like, "This software is rubbish. I hate it. I want to get rid of it. I'm never using it again." But once you know how to do it, you're right. Awesome. Um, and then I did this in EV as well as my when I was starting to get brave, and this was done with a combination of. Um, God, it's a combination of like yeah. all of them. It was like uh, right, right. For someone that doesn't do characters, that is quite an awesome character uh, well, image right there. It's a weird one because it's like the skeleton. It's awesome. I just downloaded, so yeah, you um, got a base. You got a base you're working from. Yeah, and then I sculpted over the. I did some sort of weird sculpted thing that was literally just a like learning gravity sketch in VR. Have you got VR? Use it. Yeah, yeah. I use gravity sketch. Yeah, I, I haven't used it recently. Apparently, it's, I think I'm gathering it's got suddenly better. But I used used it like a year or two ago when it was. Um, really it's it's paid. awesome. It's insane, right? The first time you get into gravity sketch, and you're like, oh my god, this this is this feels great. <laughs> well, I had that with medium um, Oculus. I want that. I want I want to get medium. I don't have a I don't have a Rift. I think you can only use that on the Rift. I think so. I yeah, I have the Quest. I see. I see. Uh, Quest though. I think that's Oculus, though. Yeah, it, it's Oculus Quest, but I, I have, I have not found a way to get Medium. Like, I, it won't let me purchase it from the store. Oh, that's a shame. So, yeah, I don't know. I have, I have to find a way. I, I have not. Yeah, yet. there's got to be a way. But um, it looks I, so I, good. Yeah, I found that uh, gravity was a bit frustrating. Having, it just felt like all the shapes were good, doing crazy things. But I turned on symmetry and I just made this mask, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I brought the mask into ZBrush just to um, fill in the very very flat 2D kind of planes. Mm -hmm. I needed them to have volume. So I just gave them some quick volume into ZBrush and sculpted over them, possibly in medium. I don't know, actually, because <laughs> there's so many different... Do I even list what I used here? Yeah, medium was used in here somewhere. Everything. <laughs> oh, actually, the shoulder pads. Um, the shoulder so pads cool. had this brush that was like, as you can see, like the shape of, say, a long... Yeah. So cool. Thing. And I just literally stamp, 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 stamp. 
and I'd made a basic shoulder pad shape in 3D Studio Max that I had a frame to build on because um, Medium's not great at giving you a, a very clean, crisp, three-dimensional view. You're a bit floaty around the in-space kind of thing. <laughs> and then um, I just built over the top of that. So cool. And, yeah, I brought it into Blender, put a cape with some physics on it, and then this was sculpted in 3D Coat with the, all of the symmetry turned on. And then there's like a how-to video at the bottom. Oh, awesome. So that you can see the gravity sketch kind of sculpt there. So your work has a very cinematic look to it. What is there anything you you avidly did to kind of you know achieve that look and feel? I get that question you know a lot. I see a lot of people asking that around. Yeah. You know, you, you I guess it's it comes back to your you know your your skill with lighting and atmosphere. And very, every one of your images look very cinematic, you know, in a really good way. Uh, this, so there's a, there's a couple of things that spring to mind. One is that um, I'm a huge fan of '80s cinematography. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of studied that a bit by um, I was going through put lockers one day and I thought I'm going to watch just every film from the 80s because I mean, you could watch them by year oh, and awesome. I decided to watch like every film that they had that looked at least half good say it got over a 6 on IMDb <laughs> I'd watch every one from 81 to 89 yeah. and I watched the cinematography be, uh, re, uh, build to like a, a point at 1985-86 when there was this amazing like blue fill light, I think the lighting was really dramatic and really obvious. It wasn't subtle or realistic, um, and it was quite fantastical. And I had, and I grew up with that, and it really yeah. that lighting strikes a chord in in me, and it, it's evocative. Um, and so there's there's a bit of that, but then the rest of it is just every time I do a piece, I will just look up um, loads have, of inspiration. Have you tried that site? Uh, it's called oh, where is it? Shot Deck. Have you tried Shot oh, yeah. Deck yet? I heard of that. What is that? It's. I'll send you a link after, but it's like a reference site. It's got hun thousands, thousands of film grabs, film like high res film grabs cataloged and you basically put your parameters in on the side you're like i need this time period day or night features uh -huh. people doesn't feature people like you could specify all these things and then it will just bring them all up and you can grab them that way right now it's in its beta still i believe so it's free but you could tell they're they're kind of filling out their catalog they're gearing up because i took a survey they made me take a survey and it's like how much would you pay for this or would you pay ten dollars like they're going to charge eventually for it but right now if you get into the you get in the beta it is it is free but it it is an amazing it is amazing yeah. tool i don't know what i'd pay a month for it but i've i've really enjoyed getting like a really good kind of cinematic reference really easily you know like that yeah i gotta get onto that because that sounds pretty good uh, there's so many times that i'll just have to i mean i keep my own folders for for films that um mm -hmm. yep that look good you know my inspiration folders um mm -hmm. Or I'll look online for that film and look go through the Blu-ray screen grabs, but it really is laborious scrolling. It, it, it is it, it to kind of catalog them like that, yeah. definitely. Uh, so yeah, I guess we've been going for a while. Is, is there any kind of parting? And I could I could probably talk to you the rest of the afternoon. It, this has been a blast. Um, do, do you have any parting thoughts or, or, or tips you'd like to pass on to the viewers? Um, gosh, this I guess it depends on what. Um, mainly, I guess. Just career path wise, um, it's uh, I'm 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 a bit of a sort of a pessimistic person, and I struggle with being positive. I remember when I went to LA to to go to that workshop, with, and Shadi was there, and Aton was there, and uh, Florian was there. Um, they fired the whole um, One Pixel Brush team was there, and um, uh, Aton listed off. Uh, criteria for a successful artist um, one of them was being able to just be positive and kind of laugh in the face of adversity and I don't really have that uh, so when I'm trying to advise people I think one of the first things you need to assess is um, if you're like a young artist and you're starting out do you really think that you've got it and if there's this voice of doubt, or if you're starting late, sometimes people will come to me and they'll say, hey, I'm a teacher, I've got this career as a teacher, but I want to be a concept artist now. I can't yeah. quit my job. And I'm like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. 
be very careful, you know. Um, so, like, if you're an older person coming into this late and you've maybe got kids and you're trying to, you know, you don't have 12 hours a day. To grind. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've really got to be careful about what it is that you're getting into and manage it well and don't just expect that you're going to, because, like, for me, I put in almost 10 years and um, I you can't see a point where I'm able to just buy a house, you know, and I'm 42 and it's scary, you know. Now, when I tell it to people, they say, oh, be careful, you sound very negative when you say that. And, uh, and it's like, look, but you're actions. also a realist, you know, know like that, that's where a lot of people are. Yeah. I don't want people to just jump into this and think I'm going to, because the thing is, and this is one of what I was going back to, what I was saying before, when I got into this back in 2011, the interviews were with people who were talking about how they, there's big bucks in this kind of thing, and there's lots of opportunities. And I was like, "Wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do well." And um, you ju you don't know that because the people who were doing all the talking back then were the people who got in at the ground floor and did really, really well, and. You need to take some advice from people who perhaps are in the middle road, who mm -hmm. perhaps have had some ups and downs, not just people who rose straight to the top and perhaps haven't had to apply for a job sometimes yeah. for years. Um, and so there's a certain degree of caution. Yeah. So if you ask yourself, you know, do I have what it takes, and there's a bit of a hesitancy, um, you either have to ask yourself if you're prepared to double down, because all. Because the other thing I found, I don't know if you found this, when people would talk about work ethic, and uh, I remember one artist saying, for, for me, the day doesn't start until after the 12-hour mark. <laughs> you know? And I was like, oh, my God. I, I, is, that what it, is that what we're talking about here? We, <laughs> I don't. I think that might be the the old sort of mindset of it. I think, especially with a lot of, I've had some young guys on here, some insanely like young guys, right? Which clearly I've not had nearly as much experience or practice as you. And with the resources available today, right, with the tutorials, with the schools, with mentorships, there's certainly fast track options for those a seeking out, b can afford them, and you know, c have the drive, right? Because you need all three of those things. Yeah, and because and a lot of them, if if you have an entrepreneurial spirit on top of that, and you start working your side hustles early, you know these people are not these people are sleeping very well, right? And they're not worried, yeah. right? A lot of it. I've seen people come in, you know, as early as two years, just absolutely, you know, they're they're systematic, right? They're routine, and they're just very smart about it. And then there's other people, you know, that's this old fashioned training. Like maybe they, they didn't train more than five hours a day. They just train the right things at the right intensity, um, and we're smart. And then there's other people, maybe naturally gifted, right? Like that's always a thing. And then you see other people that just talk to the right person, attend the right workshop, and you go to the right school, read the right mentor, and they right they go right through. And <laughs> all of a sudden now they're right there at the, the top level, they're the senior. Yeah. Now if you can uh, figure out a artist. way to forecast whether you are that guy or the other one who's struggling, that's yep. the way to know. And some people do know. Um, so... Uh, is it Ross Tran? Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, he, I remember him saying like, he knew he, his his mum would say, "You've got to be careful. This isn't a reliable career." And he was like, "Mum, you have to trust me." And if you can look somebody in the eye who's doubting you and say, "You got to trust me," then probably you're the, the person who's gonna who's gonna mm -hmm. make it. But um, uh, and you know, and, and, it, and it certainly is. It certainly is possible if you can get all the right training. And so that's what you got to think about as well. Is um, I always struggled because I was struggling with income and the idea of laying down a grand on a course that might yeah might not I was there too. benefit me. I wasn't quite sure. Like, I, and I really took one of those courses because I I knew that I had very specific problems and I didn't know whether the course would address them. So I could never really commit. Plus, having the spare thousand dollars to spend on one is the other thing. Like like I said, yeah, it's the people that have like that income that even if you're just if we're talking staying in the fantasy and illustration realm because there are those workshops out there there's atliers that you know that are like two thousand dollars they're intensive like you go or at least before you know normally right you'd go you stay there a week yeah. and you work under not only one master and pro but several and they just make circles and they they will sculpt you as an artist literally and you know I, i'm assuming like 
you know, you'd get what you pay for. I've never attended one, but I've seen, you know, former classmates of mine that would come out of those, you know, and they are, they're doing, you know, pretty nice. Like they, their skills just, it, yeah. you, get, look, you have someone with that much experience looking you in the face and say, look, you can't do this this way. This is not how you want to get results. This is what you have to do. It, yeah. it helps you like, and that's what, right. The average person, you know, they, they're self-training probably. And, but if you're not getting feedback, Exactly. You're going to make the same mistakes again, again, and again. That's exactly it. And I think that's what I've done. I've had the ability to be better than I am, but I've had nobody. And I've yep. just, in fact, I, it's not, okay, so this is important to sort of say. I never had nobody. I had one or two people, and that was kind of all it took to jump me up a few levels. And I remember one guy I was working with, uh, and I was really struggling. I was doing some garbage work, and uh, he just said, look, Da, 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 in about 20 minutes, 10 minutes, sent me something back. And I was like, oh, I get it. He just got rid of all of the fuss and just focused it down to just a simple read. And I was like, ah, all right. Yep. So that took me up a little bit of a level. And then one thing that was hugely beneficial, I want to make uh, like a shout out to Quentin. Um, I, won't, I hate pronouncing his second name. It's Mabel, like, right? Quentin, as, I, know you're, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. It's very so French. good. It's got a very unusual. Yeah. But, um, he had, he used to have a Patreon, and I got in at the ground level, and he was helping everybody, and I expressed my woes and my frustrations to him, and he really sat me down and went over my stuff, and he's so cool, and so it, he, he's got the thickest French accent, but it really <laughs> means, but what that does is, it focuses his explanations into very concise, simple phrases, yeah. and, uh, and he would show me, he would go, Look at this. This is uh, Aton's work. Uh, you were talking about he was. Uh, you were doing Quentin's impression, comparing your work <laughs> yeah. to to Aton's. Yeah, yeah. So it was really just. Uh, it really hit home. He was um, explaining. Basically, it all came down to. It has to read, is what he was saying. Oh right, I get it now. Uh, he was talking about the very initial impression does it work as a thumbnail does it look good small um how many people and... get how many people struggle with that notion i see people on facebook every day posting stuff like these, these darker images like yours and i like sometimes i have to second guess the brightness on my phone but i'll even have i'll jack up the brightness i still don't know what i'm looking at you know i'm like yeah. you know that's not how you do a dark scene no one's going to click on that because it is far too dark and you're not amplifying the light properly but yeah same thing and light on dark, dark on light, um, and it really has to read, and it has to be simple. Um, and that's you know, when I see work that's like amateur or not very good, um, which is it's harder and harder to find that these days. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually because it's noisy, and it's uh, it's it's. Uh, and I, the thing is, have you noticed this? If I look at really bad art without one bit run, meaning to sound like you know. I, I, I teach students at all levels. I, I see unprofessional art, let's say that, okay. all, all week long. So, yes, still very familiar with this. But I, I feel I feel nauseous when I, when I see that. It's, and it's not because I'm trying to be like, oh, your art looks so bad, I feel sick. It's more like when you see an arrangement of shapes, let's just be uh, impersonal yep. about it. Yes. You see an arrangement of shapes that is, that is discordant. It causes... Um, a disturbance that's not comfortable. Our job as artists is to make the, the arrange the shapes so that they create like a, peace, a sense of peace and ease. And one of the best ways to do that is to just do a simple one, two, maybe one, two, three read, and get rid of everything that's extraneous. Yeah. And I think that's what Quentin kind of distilled in me, which took me to like the next level. And so that, the reason why I was talking about that is because you mentioned how somebody could go to the right workshop and have all of that um, essential information just, you know, pushed into their brain and to shake off all of the bad habits. And that could take your learning down from 10 years down to th I don't know, three if you were to get the right teacher and if you can find the right teacher. Yeah. Yeah, that, that 
it's just similar stuff, you know. And I, because they didn't, I did art school. They don't teach you any of this stuff in art school. Nothing useful, <laughs> like let alone how to run a business. And I, and that's why for me it took so long to get to where I am, because I only had that basic art school training, and everything else on top of that has just been me. Because I, I, like, and I was reluctant to find help to take expensive classes, and you know, the my I. I paid for that and that it took me forever to get to where I am like that could have I because I'm I think I'm still relatively the same skill but the way I I can see things now and the way I approach things you know, I had to get at some kind of external person like you did with you know uh, Quentin there to, to like hey, put it in front of you and just kind of break that down and it's ah you know the, it was there all along it's just you have to mm. see it from the right angle yeah and it takes somebody who knows how to explain it um because I don't know, somebody could do like a paint over, and you're like, okay, you know. But it, if somebody can just really explain it, I feel like I'm quite good at explaining certain things. So I hope to get into teaching more once I get better. <laughs> One of the reasons why I want to get better, because I go through these phases where I think, oh, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to become a carpenter or a plumber. <laughs> But one of, the, one of the reasons why I want to get better is because I think I will know how to teach this once I get good at it. Yeah. And I'll be able to help people. Well, for the record, before we go, I think your work is as good as any of those one pixel guys. I definitely do. I appreciate you saying that. I think it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I guess, uh, it comes down to so many factors, like uh, a job comes in and can you do the ideas well enough can you iterate can you do it quickly and so what i've been noticing lately is i okay so um i have these moments where i think ah i think i'm I'm, maybe i'm competent now but the thing is it will have taken me like weeks to do a piece and and i think a, a real professional could do it in a day or two and that's where i'm that's my next journey i guess is when i can do it predictably and quickly instead of having to run around in the dark going oh, it's still you know but you you still hit the quality i think i still think hitting quality is definitely more important right than you know don't worry about how long it takes you to get the image done at least you can do it though and you you can you know you can put up can put up the image you know and it not everyone's going to wonder how long it took you to do you know so mm. and if you're yeah. flexible enough with your time then you you still do it so yeah and one last bit of advice for people getting started is if they are struggling with uh, making the best looking art, you can sometimes, and if it's a consistent thing for years, they're like, no matter what I do, I can't reach that bar. And if you're spending a week or two doing a piece, try to find a different workflow where you're doing faster, simpler sketches and do volume instead of uh, quality because I've seen some artists out there who have a huge amount of followers on Instagram and at ArtStation. Their quality is not great, but they're just churning it out, and you can you can really get an audience because people could be like, "Oh, here's the next one. Oh, cool!" And but you have to be consistent. You have to have this very same. There's a lot of different ways to approach it, um, for sure. Um, thank you very much, you know, for coming on uh, tonight. It's it's been a Quite pleasure. Fun. We had a great, and you got to come back again sometime. It's, feel like we're scratching the surface with some of this stuff (laughs) right (laughs) definitely so so thank you uh very much guys and if you have any questions for either of us of course leave them down below and you know we'll try to get back to you of course um all right so that that went great thank you very much Andy.